questions about identity theft. Oh. I was told you were the man to see. I am. Wrote some of them down. Uh, the first question I have is like, what is identity theft? So identity theft is when people steal your identity and pretend uh, to be you and use your information such as a bank account or credit card. Gotcha, right. Uh, why is identity theft a problem? Because if you don't detect it early enough, you might be facing months and years of trying to clean up the damage on your uh, credit report, credit rating. Gotcha. Um, are there like different forms? Like what are the common forms of identity theft? So there are three common forms of identity theft. The first one is phishing, which is um, fake email that pretend to be legitimate from legitimate sources and to get your personal information Second one is called farming, that is website um, trying to get your personal information and also they trying to pretend they're legitimate. And the third one is skimming, that's using a special storage device to uh, copy and store, store your credit card information. Oh wow, those are very dangerous, yeah, those very are, dangerous world. Man. Those are pretty elaborate. Um, where can I, like after this, where can I find more information about identity theft if I have like more questions. Good question. So if you want to know more about identity theft, you go on www.ftc.gov slash ID theft. Or you can call 1-877-438-4338. I'll write that down. Uh, what steps should I take if I've become a victim of identity theft? So, um, if you got, if your identity got stolen, the first thing you should do is file a police report, and then you contact the creditors and you follow up that in the writings. You use the a fit of it online, and you ask for verification that the disputed account has been closed and the uh, fraudulent uh, uh, debts has been discharged. Gotcha. Uh, if my wallet stolen, is it like a similar procedure? That is a very similar procedures indeed. If you lost your wallet, first of all, you still file, file a police report and then you go cancel your credit card and call your bank to make sure that uh, they, pay, they, they place a fraud alert on your credit report. You contact your check verification company and make sure you get a new ATM card with the new numbers and new password. Awesome. Well, that, uh, that sums up all my questions. I really appreciate it. Glad I can help. Thank you so much. Be careful of identity theft. Will do. Thanks. How are you? How are you doing, sir? I'm Nick Zlas. Good to meet you. I'm Matt Quinn. How are you? I was told you're the guy to talk to about uh, elder I'm, financial abuse. I'm that guy. Yes, sir. Yeah, my, uh, my grandpa recently just retired. Okay. And uh, one of our neighbors brought up elderly financial abuse. Yeah. I just wasn't very familiar with it, so I figured I'd come and ask you. Absolutely. I guess we could just start off with, yeah. what, what is it? Well, in essence, uh, it's when an individual intentionally misuses an elder's uh, assets or money in, for their personal gain and without the knowledge or full consent. Oh, a couple examples of, of this would be foregoing a signature, you know, using like a fraudulent signature of the elderly person or straight up just taking money from them. Or also, you could uh, you could be getting an older person to sign a deed or a will through deception or undue influence. So those are a couple of examples of that. God, that's awful. Yeah. Who, who should I suspect, like who's gonna do this? Like, well, it hurts, but family members are, are a big one. Uh, you know, sons, daughters, granddaughters, or spouses. And uh, these uh, family members may have substance abuse, gambling, or financial issues. Uh, a lot of them think that because they're old, they're, they feel entitled, a sense of entitlement, so that, you know, they think it's theirs because it's almost theirs, so they, they just think that they can take it. And uh, other people would, would include individuals who seek vulnerable seniors in the intent of exploiting them, and these may be people who just perfect, pronounce their love to an elderly person for no reason, just to gain access to the will or whatever it may be, or also caregivers. So. 
Uh, lot, lots of time elderly people need caregivers and these caregivers will have access to their homes and a lot of personal assets and uh, they, they just gives them access to all of that. So that you gotta be on the lookout for that. That is absolutely yeah. shocking. Yeah. Why, why are they such an attractive target? Well, a big factor why they are such attractive targets is because of wealth. Older people control, uh, people over the age of 50 control over 70% of the nation's wealth. And wow. so, um, and also the elderly are likely to have disabilities, which make them very vulnerable because they need caregivers, and right. these caregivers are going to have a access to all of this. Where a younger person will not need that; they can they can kind of take care of themselves. And then another one is with the advances in technology these days. Um, a lot of people are managing their finances online through that, and mm -hmm. a lot of the elderly people are are they just seem so far fetched for them; they, yeah. they don't know what's going on. So. All right, what can I do to prevent all those things from happening? Well, a couple of things that you could do is, it, the main thing is just getting out there and talk to someone. So it was your grandfather, correct? Yes. Okay, so your grandfather already took the, the first step, he, he's, he, which is to talk to a trusted family member who has your best interests at heart. So that's the first step. But the second step is you could talk to your um, your local bank, your attorney, your officer, just talk to them and let them know what ha what, what, what's going on and that would be a good step. Another step would be to contact the Adult Protective Services in your state, which they are always there to help and they deal with these kind of issues all the time. And then you also could just go to your lo lo local police station as well. So those are a couple of the steps that you could do. Yeah, those are, wow, mm -hmm. I really didn't understand yeah, that yeah. elder financial abuse was such a, a big of, deal. A lot of people don't, it's, 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 it's a major problem. Major problem. Yeah, I wish my whole family was here to listen to that. Yeah. That's all I got. Absolutely, thank you so thank much. You. Have thank a good one. Hey, how's it going today? How are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you. I'm Nick Kozlowski. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I understand you had uh, some questions about um, unexpected life events. Yeah, my wife was the one who called and uh, I told her I'd come down and she said I needed to get a better sense of right, right, unpredictable absolutely. life events. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's an important part of life. So, so I have one of the questions I have is why do I need to plan for unexpected life events? Um, well, you know, a lot of people think that you don't need to plan them because, oh, I don't know, they haven't happened yet. Um, it's just one of those things, it's an extra burden to be thinking of it financially. Um, and, you know, really, it, it gives a sense of, of, it relieves pressure a little bit. Uh, it, you know, it gives you control of the situation. If something does happen, if something does come at, I mean, come at you and you do have to face that scenario, it, it gives you control of that. Also, it's, it, you know, it allows you to save money, um, which is, you know, you want to be saving money down the long run anyway. But if something does happen, you're not going into a financial crisis. You're not your bank accounts aren't getting wiped over this uh, going on. So it's really just you know it helps just to uh, I guess plan ahead you know a little bit. Gotcha. Um, what should I ready? God forbid something happens. Um, well, it kind of depends on the situation, obviously. But if you're dealing with something like a natural disaster, obviously you want to have your uh, your photo IDs. You want to have your checkbook full of um, checks, blank checks that you're able to cash and you're able to check um, at a moment's notice. Uh, you want to have like account numbers for all your, you know, your routing numbers, all that stuff, your bank accounts. You want to have phone numbers for your financial services. Um, you know, those are those are really big, uh, big factors and what you need to have right. I mean, you need to have those quickly accessible. I mean, there are other things that you need to have. You also need to have your um, safety deposit box, uh, the key for that. Um, yeah, but you, know, you, you want to. If you don't mind me asking, what is a safety? Oh, we actually offer them here. Um, it's just uh, it's a box that we offer. That uh, you know you can just store certain items in there, whatever you want to, you know, just make sure they're secure at the bank instead of you know somewhere else at home. Like, what kind of items are we talking about? Um, well, most people they uh, they tend to put items that you you don't necessarily need at the drop of a hat, um, you know, but you do need to know exactly where they are. You need to know that they're safe. Items like your birth certificate, uh, you know, social security cards, um, home mortgages, uh, like the contract for that. Uh, anything that you really, you know, don't want to necessarily keep at your house um, to prevent anything from happening to it there, that you can, you know, you can leave it with us and you know that it's safe and secure here. Gotcha. All right. Well, I mean, I feel like I thoroughly understand. Well, great to help. Yeah, these, uh, absolutely. I'm happy. I definitely think my wife's going to be happy. That, uh, yes. I have new appreciation point. for it. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to thank you so much. I'm going to go home and talk to her about it. And, uh, might come back to you. Okay, very good. Thank you so that much. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Nick Kozlowski.
good to me. Sure. All right. to do? I have some investments and I have insurance for them, but yeah. I'm kind of confused on the whole like what is like insurance well, and all that. Well, the um, FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, insures four major uh, deposit accounts: the checkings account, the savings account, the money market deposit account, and the CD, the uh, certificate deposit. And um, they they there's insurance all of those, but the thing is, it doesn't insure as the other non-deposit investments. Such as like so, stocks or like yeah. stuff like that. Okay. So for example, if you have uh, $10,000 in your CD account and $10,000 in the mutual fund, you invest $10,000 in a mutual fund, then and the bank fails, the $10,000 plus interest in the CD account will be insured, but the mutual fund, the money you have Investing in a mutual fund would not be insured. Okay, gotcha. Uh, how much money do they insure up to? Uh, right now, the standard maximum deposit in, uh, amount is $250,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, sure. So, uh, um, are there different types of uh, accounts? And uh, yeah, matter of fact, the, uh, they insure the, it, it depends on the ownership category. Therefore, if you have uh, you can have a single account, you can have a joint account, which is when you have uh, two people, two or more people owning an account. Uh, the title is jointly in the co-owner's names, and that ensures the standard uh, maximum deposit insurance amount, just like a single account. Yeah, so that's, I think that's probably like what my wife and I have yeah, already. Probably. And then there is certain retirement accounts that uh, FDIC insurers, and those are like individual retirement accounts, uh, section four, four, five, seven, deferred compensation plan accounts, and so forth. And then uh, the last one is probably the, the revocable trust accounts. So those are the ones that the insurers. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, that's basically all I got for you. I okay. feel better about it uh, already. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking time to. Hey, thank you so much for watching this production uh, with some of my very precious students here at Masia University. Uh, Kenneth Ta is my name. I'm a professor of uh, investments here in Masia University. I hope this video was very useful to you. Uh, if you have any question, any concern, any remark, uh, feel free to make comments below. Thank you so much. Please remember to keep it safe. Thank you.